Back for Blood is not Left for Dead 3. When you scroll through YouTube, you see it time and time again, basically Left for Dead 3. It doesn't have to be, do your own thing, and see how it works out. But if you advertise your game as a spiritual successor by the makers of Left for Dead, you better make damn sure the standard at least matches or is higher than the previous title, or the fans are gonna devour you. Of course, we all know, not many people who worked under Valve's leadership are still at Turtle Rock, thanks to Crowbat. Back 4 Blood, in my opinion, does worse in most aspects compared to Left 4 Dead, apart from the graphics, but we're gonna cover all that in this video. The levels are fairly generic and mostly blend into each other, and you'll go through the same areas several times to end up back at Fort Hope. Generic town, generic sewer, generic swamp. Nothing really stands out in my playthrough. I remember the boat and the how it's apart, even though I feel that one felt a bit out of place. This worldwide parasite infection is supposed to be some major disaster, right? But it seems you only stick around your local town or area, despite them saying in the starting cutscene that they were fighting for quite some time and things have calmed down a bit. Then suddenly a big attack happened. Talk about hitting every cliche and being lazy and predictable with your writing. Now the first DLC released, and to be honest, I found this more interesting than playing the regular campaign, probably because the normal levels are so generic. Not really knowing where you are going feels better. Only some major issues I found. Not having the ability to actually climb into them yourself. How would we enter the hives ourselves? You gather at the hive entrance, sit there for 5 seconds, at least when you don't have people trolling, refusing to join you. Wouldn't it be way more interesting being able to climb in yourself? while well, you get attacked from above and below. I guess this would take some actual effort, rather than putting another loading screen in place. The ridden hides are again, fairly generic copy-paste. If you have seen one hide, you pretty much have seen them all, apart from some minor differences. Several types of content and objectives are just recycled. One has toxic air. So you need to stand next to conveniently placed oxygen tanks that for some reason are scattered around in the hives. Another has toxic water. But the objectives also get repeated and repeated. Blow up these big webs with C4. Fight several Ridden or fight a couple bosses who exit the previously blocked off area. New Ridden were added, but in truth, these are just the Ridden we already know. Add some longer spikes, give a couple of them new attacks. Call it something new. For content in the DLC, really the bare minimum in effort. And this might be their content plan for upcoming DLC too, I'm afraid. It gets boring quite fast, doesn't add anything to the current story at all. But the good thing is that you don't need to buy the DLC to get access to the hives. Not to forget, the base game and DLC have gotten multiple discounts already. A 40 euro annual pass that released one piece of low effort content in 6 months. So anyone who bought some of the more expensive editions already got screwed over for not waiting. The objectives feel repetitive and act more as filler content. For example, you have to shoot the nests on 5 separate occasions. Going from one end of the map to the other end 4 or 5 times. And this gets repeated over several chapters in the campaign. Defend an area for 6 minutes or so. Boring fetch quests. Carry boxes around the map. It all feels very uninspired and in a way, padding the playtime. Now you can argue, Left 4 Dead has similar objectives. Fill up a gas car, press a button, wait for an elevator. While you fight hordes of zombies and infected. But it's all about pacing and spacing them out so it doesn't become tedious. Less is more. If you had to gas up a car on 5 different levels you would get bored of it too. Right. On some levels. Every other door is an alarm door. And that just gets annoying. After your team goes down twice, you get a game over. So you'll have to find some new team to play with. Now I get that the idea is doing runs. But if you find a good group of guys, why not let them continue past the current chapter if they want to? Every now and then, you'll see a timer on your screen. In 3 minutes, a zombie horde is coming. This is so counterintuitive for the concept of a zombie shooter. Where sometimes you should be caught off guard by a swarm. Giving you the information ahead of time and you should find cover. Feels totally out of place for a game like this. Most of the Ridden are similar to the ones of Left 4 Dead 2. You got one that can pounce, vomit, spit and so on. So, you would think sticking to a winning concept can't go wrong, right? Where the infected in Left 4 Dead can be heard and seen, in a split second you know what you are facing and what their attacks will be. And if you are good enough, you can take them out in a couple shots. Cancel their attack in a well-timed punch. In Back 4 Blood, there are no decent sound cues when they spawn in and silhouettes of the Ridden, at least from the same types are so similar. It's hard to quickly make out what attack you're up against. And the counterplay is pressing a button depending on your character's abilities to get out of a grab or pounce. 
or if he got a card for it. This takes all the skill away from the gameplay and I guess for campaign playing against bots. This is fine, but in PvP not so much, but we'll get to that later. Of course, there are other tools like flashbangs and stun guns, but mostly the same applies here. So you get several base ridden, while the others have slightly different copies of them, moving a weak spot around, giving different attacks or making one a lighter shade of grey. It's just a very lazy way of saying, we have X amount of ridden, while in reality, they are just lazy copy pastes of the base types, and very low effort. I wonder where the designers went, who made the monsters in Evolve. Because those were on another level of what we're getting now in back 4 blood. There are the weak types like the Stinger, and the others are all tanky bullet sponges. At least for the ones that you can play in PvP, fighting them is more annoying, because they often ambush you out of nowhere. While you are in a tight corridor with not much space to move around, add corruption cards to them, which for example, can add armor to the weak spots. It's just not fun to fight them, having to pump several magazines into them every few seconds. I'm not a fan of the card system. In promotional material the devs would boast about the AI director, that nothing is scripted, and cards and corruption cards will give you infinite replayability, adding armor to weak spots. Zombies with exploding heads for example, why make it predictable with the corruption cards, letting you know ahead of time what is coming, while you claim replayability thanks to the director. Again, the card system undermines a lot of what the game director should do behind the scenes, and keep it a surprise. You can't counterplay what the cards throw at you, because once you picked your deck it's locked in, you can't make any changes during the run, so what is the point? Now they claimed it was a way to have progression in the game, but I'm not at all interested in these cards. Every time you start a new round, you sit there waiting for your team to pick cards. Over 3 minutes, make them lock in their character. More waiting, and then more waiting as people buy their stuff at the vendor, it just gets tedious. Fort Hope is sort of your base of operations, but it's totally dead, nothing happens here. Despite the surrounding town being infected with the Ridden, you never see a sign of life. No attacks on the base. Nothing happens as you progress through the campaign. Why not have body bags brought in while you hang around? The occasional attack, people shooting down zombies in the surrounding area. Not even gunshots in the distance. It's just a set piece that feels more like a waste of resources. With characters who sit there in a boring animation loop. As you play through the campaign, you will run into a bar where you have to start a jukebox to attract the surrounding zombies to the bar. So some of the survivors you saved earlier can escape. Now as you start the jukebox, a song starts playing, it shuts down as the zombies attack it. And you restart it. They thought it was a good idea to license 17 songs for this section, going from Motorhead, Queen and a lot more. Now a lot of people found this to be their favorite level because of this, but really, how much effort is it to set up a song you lack in a level? Just play Spotify in the background with your favorite music. Imagine how much this would have cost. While the normal campaign barely has any music, Apart from a generic ambient soundtrack that I couldn't even point out if I heard it. And if you like horror or a good thriller movie, you know music can really add to the atmosphere, as well as complete silence. But it all depends on good pacing of the actual game and using it sporadically, having action non-stop, rhythm spawning next to you without any sound cues. It's more annoying than fun to fight them. For boss fights you have the ogre, breaker and the hack, and the final boss. You would think these fights are some kind of highlight of playing through the campaign, but in reality, these are some of the most boring parts of the game. They are big, slow, numbering bullet sponges, whose attacks are easily avoided. The AI is so bad, that they get confused as one person shoots them. They get triggered to go after him, another person shoots him, then he gets triggered and confused again, and try to go after the new attacker. None of them are a real threat to you. A regular horde of zombies is probably more dangerous than these bosses. And there isn't even any music to set the atmosphere for what should be some big set piece fight in the game. Remember the awesome soundtrack in Left 4 Dead when you fought the tank or when you startled the witch? Exactly my point. Now we've reached the end of the campaign and I hope you are ready for some tentacle porn. We get to shoot stationary tentacles in the face several times. Then we go underground as we avoid stationary tentacles while shooting a turtle in the mouth. After that, we slowly chase the turtle around shooting the weak spots. This boss fight is so boring and uninspired, made into a long fight where it takes a lot of time to get past every phase, to justify calling it the only part in the final chapter, because it takes a good amount of time to complete. The ending of the game is the most generic open-ended ending, where it comes down to, well, we beat this boss now, there are probably more of them, so we'll just keep doing what we're doing. We all know Swarm is already the perfect game mode, so for that reason, nothing is gonna change to the mode. Nothing is gonna be reworked or changed, only new characters and sections of maps will be added. It's just strange how I can't find players at a certain time of day, 
sitting in a queue for 20 minutes, but it's the perfect game mode. Playing Swarm really showcases how unbalanced the Ridden are. By reworking the Ridden, just to balance Swarm would be too much effort, so every round ends up the same, Ridden get upgraded, as the circle that restricts your play area shrinks. They get stronger and more tanky, up to the point you end up in a tiny circle, which is not fun and just frustrating as a game concept. Most of the attacks can boop you out of the circle, so it just becomes a hilariously stupid fight, where you get exploded, punched or spit out of it, to scramble to get back in the tiny circle, only to do it again just a few seconds later. Two things can happen, if they take many tanky ridden, you probably won't last long, or several people take one of the more fragile ridden, and then it will probably end up in a tiny circle, nothing gameplay wise stands out, no instant kills, no booping people off the map, there are even invisible walls set up to prevent this from happening. What gave me the most joy in F4 dead is going after those insta kills, setting up for a kill combining a smoker and a charger. You know, some actual team play. What you can do is try to spit on someone so they fly outside of the circle while being stuck in the web. Thrilling gameplay. I remember several moments in Left 4 dead to this day that made me feel like a god, just because of how crazy and rare it was to happen. Nothing of this sort is happening in Swarm, it's just attack attack, until you become so overpowered and the survivors get so restricted in their play area. They can't do much about it, and winning by beating the other team by one second is just the most uninspired way to win a game mode. A lot of the time, you spend more time waiting for the initial timer to tick down than scavenging for weapons. Swarm is just ticking a box on a checklist, so we can say we got PvP. Low effort, poor design and unbalanced. What I see time and time again, features people really want in the game. Modding, renting servers, split screen and campaign PvP. Modding alone would greatly improve the replayability. You know people will mod on the left 4 dead survivors, infected and maps in back 4 blood within weeks, and create maps that are better. More fun, more detailed, than the ones the base game has, but sadly, they are more interested in selling low effort DLC for a cash grab, rather than giving the community what we want for this game. And of course, I don't blame the developers, but the poor leadership, lack of vision, being out of touch. Anyway, what do you think guys? Let me know in the comments below. And if you made it to the end of the video, you'll learn. This was not actually my voice, it's a deep fake of my own voice. Take a look at the video on the screen to learn how I did this, and I'll see you on the next video.